Hey everyone, it's Moonbow here, coming at you with another episode of Scrap Mechanic City. Uh, I want to start off by thanking everyone for all of the uh, support that you guys have been giving me in this series and liking the videos. It certainly helps me out a lot, and I always enjoy reading your feedback as well. Uh, but in episode 4, I really am excited to show you this huge, massive city hall that I've made for the city. Um, it's got the flag there with M for Moontropolis, of course. Um, it has a little under kind of uh, parkway that you can drive with cars, as well as some parking spots there. Um, and a huge fence. That fence goes around the entire place, actually. So I'll start showing you guys around here. I'll have to warn you guys, there are a few lag spots in this uh, kind of building. But they're not too bad. Once you get up to the upper floors there, you can actually walk around without any uh, FPS loss at all. Uh, so as you can see, it's pretty simple on the back side because buildings will be going behind it. Uh, but on this side here, I took the time and effort to make something that looks really nice. Um, and it looks really good in front of the kind of skyline backdrop as well. Uh, so as you can see though, this fence just goes from one side all the way to the other. And I've made a pretty cool uh, front gate here, actually. So you'll notice this is where the lag will start up. But there's a sensor on either side of this gate. And so what you can do, actually, is stand on top of it. And it'll open the gate up on both sides. And you can kind of just walk right through. And that will shut on itself like so. I thought that was a really nice feature. So the main reason for it, of course, is uh, driving a car through the front and the back here. Um, which I will kind of give you a quick example of right now, actually. Alright, so here I am in my trusty Corvette Stingray. Um, so it has a really crappy uh, ground clearance, but it does manage to get over these curbs pretty well. Uh, so I'll show you by driving up to the uh, front sensor right here like so. The uh, gates will open for the car. And then you just have to drive through like so, and then the gate will shut behind you. So it's, uh, it adds a nice touch to this build, I find. Uh, I really wanted to kind of get away from those square buildings, actually, and uh, get some, uh, you know, unique shapes going on, as well as, uh, you know, getting creative with the design of things. So uh, some of it's decorated on the inside there, but um, for the most part, there's some emptiness because it is just such a big building, and it started to get kind of laggy in certain areas as well, so... Um, I had to kind of stop myself for a little bit and uh, just uh, deal with what I had anyway. But I've added a few more doodads to the uh, collection as well. Uh, and I am just going to get out of this vehicle now and I'm going to hop up to the uh, front entrance there for you guys. Alright, so overall the shape of the building is pretty unique uh, and that's what I was going for, at least on the front side here. So I added some really cool kind of rounded edges here. Um, with some nice uh, dark trim, which gives it the modern look, which I really enjoy. Uh, I added a water kind of fountain area here. Oh, look at that. Someone has thrown a coin. Must have been one of the citizens of the city dropping in. So I put the uh, kind of, you know, clearance height thing up there just to make it a little bit more realistic. Uh, so this is kind of like the... I don't know, I guess you could call it like a service entryway down here. Uh, this is the area where um, people could kind of get dropped off or whatever. And there's a big area down here as well. Um, there's not much down here, obviously, but it does lead to the back porch here, um, where I'll probably be adding some picnic gear and stuff like that for some new doodads in the city. Uh, so there's a lot to look forward to with that. Aside from that, though, down here is pretty simple. Um, not much else to it, though. It's easy to drive around underneath. I added these rounded uh, kind of sidewalk-looking things, so it makes it feel really nice to actually drive around in a circle. I added some plant life there just to kind of make it look a little more unique. So I added two balconies here in the front entrance, so you get a nice view of the uh, kind of uh, the parking lot and whatever will be coming up on the other side of the road there and the second balcony here. 
Um, so actually, I had a uh, revolving door here, which is really cool actually. So you can see it here. Uh, I put the revolving door in and I was really happy with it. I mean, it was a lot of fun to use and a lot of fun to actually have the uh, appearance of it as well. But ultimately, it was uh, adding a little bit more lag than it really needed to in this build. And so I had to get rid of it. And so here we are. I've changed it to a more simple entrance, but nonetheless, it still looks pretty cool. Um, and I like the entrance here, actually, because it leads you right into the uh, front entrance of the city hall. Uh, so here you have some front reception desks where you can kind of ask your questions. Uh, if you need to go see someone, have an appointment, who knows what. Uh, so over on this side here, uh, this is kind of just the bathroom area. So I've added, you know, male, female washer, uh, washrooms. Uh, nothing too complicated in here, though, because I'm trying to, you know, not kill the FPS too much for everyone. Uh, but it works pretty well for me. I'm getting, like, you know, 20 frames, maybe. Which is not the greatest, but, uh, like I said, once we get upstairs, it will, uh, it'll get much better. So this is gonna be some type of big meeting room here. Uh, I, I'm gonna be adding some big tables and stuff, which will all be kind of, like, office, uh, office doodads and stuff in the workshop. So you can see I have the two staircases on either side, which will be going up in one moment. Uh, so this is just more empty space right now. Uh, I've added kind of like a storage room back here, uh, which is kind of like that curved uh, wall that you saw outside. And this is kind of like a privacy window because this is where um, the staff and all the employees will be uh, kind of as a meeting area, as well as maybe a couple more offices down here. Uh, and I have a whole bunch of room here as well because this is going to be like the maintenance area and So down here you actually see that's where the entrance is to the uh, roadway uh, So this could be kind of like a delivery uh, Area here so you can have shipping and receiving with some more storage down here perhaps and it leads upstairs to the uh, staff and employee area as well so we can get out of here, and we will go upstairs now. Actually, here I almost forgot. This is the uh, this is the uh, front reception area here on the other side. Just a few chairs uh, facing the outside there. So once we get upstairs, like I said, the lag will start going away. So this is the um, these are the offices up here. Um, they're all pretty generic. I made a few new doodads that I'll put up on the workshop here, like this computer desk as well as a filing cabinet. It's nothing complicated, but it's kind of nice to have so I can repeat them and not have to build each one individually. Here's another one. Um, actually, it's kind of uh, interesting to note that these are... Um, they're all free-floating objects, actually. So if you see, I have the lift here. I can actually pick these up and put them down. Uh, so I thought that was really nice and it doesn't even uh, affect the lag very much so these are all loose objects all the offices actually so here's another office here with a different kind of layout and then this back office is like a two-person office who knows if you need to do like teamwork or something with two uh, two filing cabinets there uh, so that's pretty neat and like I said these ones are all loose as well but I'm not really getting too much of an issue with that and this is just one more office here maybe like a bigger office with uh, one desk as well. I started making a pretty cool uh, staff lunch room as well, so you got a couple fridges there. Nice and simple though, saving the FPS, uh, kind of like the staff table where you can eat. And I tried my best to design a coffee maker. Uh, if you press this button and hold it, you can see it's spinning. It's supposed to be some type of coffee maker. Uh, I'm gonna put it as a doodad as well, just because I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, pretty simple in design, but it adds a nice effect to the whole area here. Aside from that, that's pretty much it over on this side. You can see there's actually a hallway on the other side of the staircases here that you can see a nice view of uh, outside. And this here is uh, the room on top of the storage area and open area. Uh, so this has an upstairs balcony here, so it has a nice view of the uh, city streets. Um, so there'll be buildings back here, uh, which will add even more to the city effect as well. And there's one more floor. I'm really happy with this design actually. So I added this nice uh, skylight here. 
Uh, so you get some sunlight in. Hopefully we'll be getting lights in scrap mechanics soon enough, so that way we don't have to really rely on these um, god rays and sunlight to actually get some lighting inside of a building. Uh, but I thought it looked cool anyway with the uh, shadows being cast on the floor there in the wall. Uh, so this is just another huge open area. I was thinking of having like a presentation room and uh, making like a big screen and extending the ceiling. Uh, we'll see about that. I would like to get your feedback on this build actually if you guys have any ideas to put into the uh, city hall build. Um, I'm going to keep on working on other things. I'm sure you guys are probably wondering about the subway as well. Uh, I really want to get the subway done, I'm, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to really be happy with it until it's perfect and it does exactly what I want it to do. Uh, so hopefully you guys will be patient with the uh, build of the subway, uh, but I mean, it's it'll get there. As you can see, I've also added up in the back there uh, some crane stands for the uh, for the cranes that are up on the rooftops there. So they look way better in the background now, actually, and the uh, skyline with them just looks so much nicer as well. So I am going to quickly show you guys a couple doodads uh, that you guys can get on the Steam Workshop. So here are the few things that I've added. Uh, you can see there's that filing cabinet there. Uh, this one's really cool. This is the hot dog stand. Uh, so it's kind of nice to grab these things off of the workshop. You can pop them down anywhere in the city. Uh, so this one actually has an opening grill as well as the condiments and stuff like that with an actual 3D umbrella that comes down over top. Uh, I really, uh, really like that one. Uh, there's the computer desk that I designed for the offices inside the building. And here's kind of like a rudimentary fire hydrant. Uh, you can pop those down along the sidewalk. Uh, they add a nice little touch of detail, actually. And here's that revolving door, actually. So if you uh, put a bearing down in a central location and you put the uh, middle of it onto the bearing and attach it to a controller and make it do 360s, then you actually have yourself a revolving door. It's really simple, but something nice to have on the workshop. So thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, I appreciate all the support in this series, and I'm really happy you're enjoying it. Uh, so be sure to hit that like button, guys, and subscribe for Endless Scrap Mechanics.